They've just, uh, my two older ones have just started school. I think school is the earliest point at which I care what my kids have been up to. Because like, when my son was at nursery, I used to go pick him up from nursery, and the girl at work in there would go, great day today, great day today, great day, great day. Would you like to your daily report of what he's been up to? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> what could he possibly have done that I would care about? Let me guess. <laughs> he dropped some stuff and he shit himself, right? <laughs> uh, that's what he does at home. Unless he's built a shed, I, I really couldn't care less. In fact, I resent the fact we're having a conversation. That's the honest truth of it. <laughs> Difficult. It's difficult for teachers. I, I respect teachers, you know, and I, they get all these Christmas presents and, they, and people say, oh, we've got to buy presents for our teachers. Good. Teachers deserve it, mate. Do you mean, I used to be a teacher. It's boring. I mean, it's liberating once you stop caring about the kids' futures. Then, then it becomes a, a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful job. But you have to do boring stuff. Do you know? We have to do exam invigilation, right? This is where the kids are sitting in a hall doing an exam and you've got to walk around pretending that you're interested and you're worried about them cheating, so you just... <laughs> Sometimes I would do this, right? <laughs> Good luck, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just add a little spice to proceedings. It was very boring, though. I had to find a way of passing the time. The way that I did it is I played Battleship. Now, how this would work was I'd get a piece of paper and I'd write down on the piece of paper the name of the kid that I thought was the ugliest in the room. <laughs> or the kid that I thought had the shittest haircut. Then the other teacher would walk through the hall. <laughs> and they would stop by the kid that they thought I was talking about. And if they got it correct, then they'd sunk my battleship. It, it, it was a very fun game. <laughs> it's now been made illegal in West Sussex, sadly. <laughs> I just find it, I, I find it exciting. My kids get so excited about Christmas, and I sort of feel, I get caught up in, you know, what's, what does the future hold for them, and are they going to follow their dreams? And, and then I realise that Christmas TV, it just, I disagree with it, right? I disagree with this, I actually disagree with chasing your dreams. I actually disagree with it. If there's any message you get from this, don't chase your dreams, right? <laughs> Life is not about chasing your dreams. Life is about compromising your ideals and waiting to die. That, that's what <laughs> life is about. Right? You know, like, I just think teachers get a hard time. I think they get a hard time about this, right? Because somebody like Justin Bieber will win an award, right? And then he'll come out and he'll go, um, just want to say, this is for the teachers that said I was never going to do it. Yeah? Do you know why your teachers said you were never going to do it, Justin? Do you know how statistically unlikely it is for you to achieve the outcomes that you have done, yeah? Especially bearing in mind what a bellend you must have been as a kid, right? <laughs> Do you know how unlikely it is? How irresponsible a careers advisor would you have to be to say to a kid, you know what, mate, you need to stop studying, you're going to be the number one recording artist in the whole world. <laughs> If my kid came home and said that that's what has been told to him by a school, I would go to that school and I'd burn it to the fucking ground. <laughs> right? I want to see the other way. I want to see a teacher who's told a kid he wouldn't amount to shit and he didn't come out and admit it. Right? I, I want to see him brought out on TV just going, this is for Mrs Clerkenwell. She said I was never going to do anything with my life and I just wanted to come out here and say, I haven't. You know, like... <laughs> I've got nothing really going on. Uh, free felt marriages behind me. I'm wearing everything I own. I just want to say, she said I was going to be a waste of space, and it turns out I have been. So, uh, <laughs> this is my teacher that said I wasn't going to amount to anything. Yeah? That's what I want to see. Because chasing dreams is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Like, and people who are doing regular, decent jobs get disrespected. That's what annoys me. Like, you see it on X Factor. X Factor, right? When these people get through to the live rounds, right? They, they take them back to their old place of work, which is a perfectly decent job. They'll take this bloke back, he goes to Tesco's or something, sees his mate working on fruit and veg, who he used to work with, and he'll go, that's Pete, he used to work with him. <laughs> you know, the thought of having to go back <laughs> and do that ever again just makes me want to kill myself, you know. <laughs> See you later, Pete. Pete's just over here, like... I just like bananas. You know what I don't <laughs> understand is that being famous is fine, but don't pretend it's noble. It's not a noble 
ambition, right, is vacuous. So just admit that. X Factor, they try and add something. They try and add some substance to it. Like you see, they give them backstory so that you go, oh my God, they've got to do it. You'll see somebody go, oh, you know, well, I just, I just really want to make it through because my brother's got cancer and he said that one of his like, dying wishes would be to see me go through to the live rounds. And I think, well, that is very noble, isn't it? Because I would have assumed that one of his last dying wishes would be to get better. Right, but this guy <laughs> is willing to sacrifice that so that you can make it through to Louis' six chairs. I mean, that's pretty amazing, isn't it?